We are going to start something new today. So over the last week and a half, uh, we've been adding and subtracting square roots. So we've been simplifying square roots, and then we've been adding and subtracting them. So this week, for the rest of this week, we're going to talk about multiplying square roots. Um, multiplying square roots is going to work a little different than adding square roots. And so we'll, we'll start with this example here to kind of see how it's going to work. And then we'll go through some more complicated examples and, uh, and work through those today. But it's, it's not really complicated. It's not real tough. Um, so let's, let's start with this here. Does anyone want to guess what we might do to multiply these two square roots together? So let, I'll, I'll start by saying this. It's not like adding square roots where we have to have like terms. When we're multiplying two numbers that have square roots in them together, they do not have to be like terms. We can multiply them together as they are. Um, so which parts of these square roots do you think we could multiply together? Two and five. The two and the five, why, Jack? Because they're on the outside. All right, so Jack is suggesting that the two and the five can multiply together because they are both coefficients. They're both on the outside, and I agree with him. We can do that. So two times five is ten, right? All right, what other parts do you think we can multiply together? Yeah, so the square root of 3, the 3 on the inside there and the 7 on the inside there, those can multiply together because those are both what? Well, they're both in the square root, so they're both radicands, right? So we can multiply the radicands together, and we get 21. Um, and then what do you think I need to do with that 21? Yeah, it needs to be in a square root. Since the two numbers we multiplied together were in the square roots to get that, then that needs to be in a square root. All right, now, we have a square root here. Uh, it has a coefficient. It has a radicand. What's the next thing we would do um, based on what we know? That, that is the correct answer, but is there anything else we could do with that, maybe? Let, let's see if we can simplify this. Okay, what would we do to simplify the square root? So we'll do a factor tree just on the radicand. We don't need to worry about the outside number here. So we get 3 times 7, and those are both prime. Are we going to end up with any pairs here that will come out? No. No. So if you're simplifying a square root and you see there aren't any pairs, you know that all we're going to do is multiply that 3 and 7 back together. You don't need to do anything else. So this is actually our final answer here. All we did is we multiplied the coefficients together and got a new coefficient. We multiplied the radicands together, got a new radicand, and that radicand could not simplify, so we're done. That's it. So in this example, we've got um, two numbers that both have rad radicals in them. They both have square roots. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing. So we'll start by multiplying the coefficients together. What is 4 times 4? 16. And then we'll multiply the radicands together. What is 2 times 10? 20. And that 20 we got by multiplying the radicands, so it needs to be 20. it needs to be in the square root. And then just like the last one, we need to check to see if we can simplify it. So let's go ahead and factor the radicand and see if we would be able to simplify. Uh, how does 20 factor? 5 and 4, or we could do 2 and 10, right? Uh, and then 4 would be... 2 times 2. Now in the last one we checked and we didn't have any pairs so we just didn't we didn't keep going. Um, are we going to end up with any pairs here? Yeah. yeah, we have a couple of 2's there so we, we need to keep going and, and simplify this then. So the next step to simplifying this is to rewrite it and we're going to keep it exactly the same. We're going to keep the 16 on the outside, we're going to keep our square root but instead of the 20 on the inside what are we going to have? We're going to have the prime factorization, right? So starting from this point with the 16 square root of 20 right here, it's just simplifying a square root like we did a couple weeks ago. All right, now what? Circle of pairs. And then what do we do with the pair? That goes to the outside. So we already have something on the outside. We already have a 16 out there, right? So since we have a 16 out there and we're going to multiply by 2, what's 16 times 2? 
And what's left on the inside? All right, so let, let's write down the steps that we're doing just so that we, we keep it straight. Uh, just like always, you will be allowed to use these notes on tests and quizzes and homework and all that stuff. Um, so the first thing we did is we multiplied which, which numbers together? The coefficients. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply coefficients. That's going to be your new coefficient. Then after we multiplied the coefficients, we... What do we do next? After we multiplied the coefficients, we multiplied the the square roots, the radicands, all right? So uh, one thing that we're going to do a little different, we're not going to multiply the radicands together, but we're going to factor them first. And this is something that's going to help us with simplifying it later, all right? So those first two examples were really simple ones, but the problems are going to get more complicated. And if we multiply them together, the next thing we're going to do is factor them anyway. So we're just going to start by factoring them. Once we do that, we're just going to continue simplifying the square root like we normally do. So at that point, we would circle our pairs, the pairs would go on the outside, and then we multiply everything out and we get our final answer. All right, so you don't need to do anything in your notes for this. I'm going to go back to example two real quick. And I want to show you what this would look like uh, changing the second step. So the way we did this problem the first time was we multiplied the coefficients, which we still want to do first. Uh, so we'll multiply 4 times 4 and get 16. Um, but then instead of multiplying 2 times 10, I'm going to start by factoring them first. Now, can I factor the 2? No. 2 is a prime number, right? Um, so I'm going to keep that 2. I'm, I'm going to use that 2, but I can factor the 10. How does 10 factor? 2 times 5. 2 times 5. All right, so then the second step says combine the factors and put them in order. All right, so we're going to combine the factors from the 2 and the 10. So from the 2, we just have the 2, and then from the 10, we have 2 times 5. So what we're doing here, if you look at the problem that you did earlier, this is the third step that we got instead of the first, right? Because what we did is we multiplied 2 times 10 and got 20, then we factored the 20, and then we got 2 times 2 times 5. So what we're doing is we're just skipping over a step by factoring it first and then putting them together. So at this point, then we circle our pair, we multiply it by the 16 out front, and we get 32 square root of 5. And it's just a little bit less work that way. In this example, um, are there any coefficients to multiply together? No. We could put coefficients there if we want. What would be the coefficient on the square root of 6? What? And the square root of 15? So we could do 1 times 1 and we would get 1, but we don't need that 1 there. So the coefficient part isn't really necessary because there aren't any coefficients. So then step 2, we want to factor the radicands first. We're not going to multiply it together. We're not going to do 6 times 15, but we're going to start by factoring it. So what is, what's it going to look like when we factor the 6? How does 6 factor? 3 times 2. And then how about the 15? 3 times 5, okay. And we want to combine those, but we want to put them in order. So when we put them in order, uh, what's going to come first? Least to greatest. We go least to greatest. So what's the least of all the numbers we have here? So this is, this is really important to keep it d separate from adding square roots. What we're doing now is we're combining this, the radicands. When we were adding them, we kept the radicands the same. All right, so make sure that you keep that separate. So we're going to combine all of these together. So what's going to come first? Two. That 2. Okay, then what? And 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 times 5. five. So we put all of these together in one square root. And now we're going to simplify this just like we would any other square root. So what do we have a pair of? Three. A pair of threes. What happens with that three? They go on the outside. goes on the outside. And what's left on the inside? Two times five. Two times five, which is ten. Now, we could do this problem by multiplying from the very beginning, six times fifteen, which is ninety. And then we can factor the ninety and get nine times ten and three times three and two times five 
but you'll notice that after I do this factor tree, I have all the same factors as I had right there. All right, so instead of multiplying it together and then factoring, we're going to factor and then put them all together. It saves us a step. All right, so for this problem here, first thing we're going to do is multiply what? Coefficient. We're going to multiply the coefficients. So we have 2 times 3 is 6. Now, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room here. I'm not going to put it right underneath because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor those radicands, right? So I want to make sure I leave myself some room to factor those. So how does 98 factor? 98 is even, right? So what has to go into it since it's even? 2. And using your calculator, what's 98 divided by 2? 49. And then we know 49. 49 is what times what? 7 times 7. And then the 10 will factor, and we get what? 2 times 5. All right, so now we're going to put all that together in one square root. All right, so basically what we're doing here is we're multiplying all these numbers times all these numbers by putting them together in the one square root. So we're going to have 6 square root of what's going to come first? 2. Yeah, we've got two twos, right? Two times two. And then I see a five here should come next. And then we've got our two sevens. Now what? <coughs> Circle pairs. All right, so I see a pair of twos and a pair of sevens. So... We'll take that stuff on the outside. So on the outside, we've got a 6 already there. We're going to multiply by 2, and then we're going to multiply by 7. So 6 times 2 is 12, and then 12 times 7, might need the calculator, 84. get 84. And what's left on the inside? 5. This problem here is still a multiplication problem. Uh, it just looks a little different because it's got the parentheses, right? But those parentheses, since they're next to each other, means what? Yeah, it means we're multiplying them together. All right, so with the parentheses right next to each other, it's still a multiplication problem. All right, so first thing we do is we multiply the coefficients. Uh, we have a 4 here, but there's no coefficient here. So is it 4 times 0? It would be 4 times 1, which is 4, right? So if there's only one coefficient, it's just going to be that coefficient, that number. So that 4 is going to be our coefficient. And then we need to do a factor tree here for the 72. Uh, 72 is 8 times 9. Is that right? Or you could do 2 times 36 would work also. Uh, or a lot of different ways we could do it, actually. Um, then the 8 would be 4 times 2. 4 is 2 times 2. 9 is 3 times 3. And then how about the 75? How do we factor 75? 3 times 25. And then 25 is 5 times 5. All right, so again, instead of multiplying the 72 times the 75 and then factoring it, we're going to factor them first and then just combine all those factors. So it looks like we don't have any 2's over here with the 75, but we've got some 2's over here. So what are we going to end up with inside our square root? How many 2's do we have? Looks like 3 of them. 1, 2, 3. <coughs> then we've got a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here. So we've got 3 3's also. And then we've got all the ones from over here, but we still have two fives over here. And I need to make sure my square root covers everything, so let me cover that up. All right, now what? Yeah, now we just we continue simplifying, so the next step would be to circle pairs. So we've got a pair of twos, a pair of threes, and a pair of fives. So on the outside, we're going to have 4 times 2, which is 8, times 3, 24, and then 24 times 5, 
120. And left on the inside, we've got that 2 and that 3. 2 times 3 is 6. That part was a little easier. So we get 120 square root of 6. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go through this while you're working on it. Um, coefficient, we're just going to end up with that 2 because it's 2 times 1, so we get 2 there. And then we'll factor our radicands. I'll use 5 and 10 and 5 and 2 for the 50. And then for the 18, I'll use 2 and 9 and then 3 and 3. So when we combine those then, we're going to get, looks like we've got two twos, and then two threes, and two fives. So now we just need to continue simplifying the square root. Um, looking for pairs here, we've got a pair of twos, a pair of threes, and a pair of fives. So with everything circled, what's going to happen with our square root? I'll ask it again. With everything circled, what's going to happen with our square root? It's going, to be gone. it's going to be gone, right? So nothing's left in the square root, so we are not going to have a square root in our answer. It's actually just going to be a whole number answer. So we're going to multiply all of this stuff, the 2 times 3 times 5, by the 2 on the outside. So let's, let's start at the beginning here. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 12 times 5 is? 60. And remember, all of that's on the outside, so we need to, well, keep our square root off of that. We don't have anything left in the square root, so we don't need the square root. It's just 60. So sometimes when we multiply square roots together, we're going to get a whole number answer. Kind of like when we take the square root of a perfect square. Neither one of these is a perfect square by itself, but when we multiply them together, we get a whole number.